Welcome to ITV edition and uh, this particular morning we'll bring for you the Minister of Peace Building, Stephen Parkwall, and we'll be discussing mainly issues with regards to the proliferations or the increase of such in violence across the country. We understood and we know very well that there have been violence uh, in area of BA and Twitch and also there have been cattle and others conflict in Magui County of Eastern Equatorial State. Let me usher in uh, Honorable Stephen Parkwall, the Minister of Peace Building. Well, thank you very much, Honorable Minister. Mm -hmm. uh, like just I said a while ago, there have been this uh, surge of uh, in violence across uh, the country, uh, in United State, in Jongole also, in Eastern Equatoria, and part of the country is not at ease. Uh, as the Minister in charge of uh, this particular docket, Peace Building, does this raise your eyebrow? Well, um, there's nothing new in this. Our country has been uh, in turmoil since 2013 and even prior to that uh, just uh, emerging out of war to gain our independence uh, we did not get an opportunity to establish a strong state institution to enforce law and provide public security uh, with the eruption of war again in 2013, uh, there has been a breakdown of institutional capacity of the young nation that has not uh, been given an opportunity again to develop institutionally. The war has compounded this. Our communities have been arms and with the breakdowns of the state institutions, uh, communities have been doing it alone against each other. Uh, the solution to it is peace. We have signed an agreement in 2015. It collapsed in 2016. Then we went back to the same turmoil. Uh, this is the opportunity provided now by the, the agreement of September 2018. And uh, we have been back on putting back together the structures of the state's institution from the national level with the formation of article. And we are still working on the formation of the state institutions at the state level up to the counties. But the major challenge as we speak today is uh, that we have uh, not managed to unify the forces, uh, the fighting forces of the, of the oppositions and the, the government. Uh, we still have a lot of uh, work to do. We have uh, training centers that have been uh, established since 2018, 2019. We have not graduated the forces. Uh, uh, the process uh, has been slow. Uh, I think the solution to all this uh, problem of insecurity and intra communal violence is unification of forces building of our institutions of law enforcement, especially the security sector, to provide public security for our people. Well, Honorable, having said all this, coming from 2013 violent, 2016, and now also this such in violence across the country, for instance, the current such in violence, we have saw the president you know, constituting a, a committee to investigate the violence between uh, the youth and ABA. Uh, and uh, Twitch, the fight in Annet. We have also seen this fighting in Unity State, uh, the, you know, area of Koch, Lair, and Mayendi, and also the conflict in Magui County and other parts of the country. Uh, Tambra had been in, in problem uh, the previous month. What are the trigger? some of the trigger of this conflict, the current conflict we are having? This, these things uh, uh, do not open, you know, uh, these, these incidents can be avoided only if we have a strong state institutions. And this will happen only after the unification of 
the forces that have been fighting each other for the last 13 years, I mean for the last uh, seven years, since 2013. Then we go about disarming our communities. What is happening in South Sudan does not happen in normal states, in the states that are stable politically. Uh, what you see there is a manifestation of the failure of the state institutions. Criminals are there in every society. Most of what you see here are criminal activities that need just law enforcement. Uh, Intra-communal violence, uh, you know, inter-communal wars have been there. But this has been exacerbated by the fact that youths are using weapons of war that are conventionally the same thing with the same, I mean, the same weapon we have as government. Our communities have them. Youth have arms in abundance in this country. Uh, these, these things do not mean that our people are necessarily that bad. We are not just in their life as a government. They, they are fending for themselves. Uh, what is happening in, in Tumbura uh, is, is happening in, in, in Jongle. What is happening in Jongle is what is happening in Eastern Equatoria. What is happening in Eastern Equatoria is what is happening in Rumbek. We just need to ask ourselves why. And that is because our state institutions are weak. Uh, communities should not be bearing arms, for one thing. For another thing, law enforcement agencies should be the only institution with weapons like this AK-47 that you have everywhere in South Sudan. Now, it is like this question of chicken and egg. Is it the disarmament of the communities first? Is it peace first among the political parties that have actually uh, failed so far to, to put a strong state institution together first? And I think it should start with the government first. Let the government structures be established. Let us eliminate the element of violence. It's starting with the, 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 the armed group first, because we are now all in the government. You have the I.O. here. The commander in chief of the I.O. is the first vice president. You have the commander in chief of, 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 of our SSPDF forces here in the government. We have Sauer here with us, and, and all these other parties who are also come from constituencies in South Sudan. We need to focus now on unification of all these forces. Let us create a formidable national armed force to enforce the law. Again, through dialogues and all other means, let us engage our people in dialogues. We have been engaging them in, 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 in Pibor, in, in, in the Lone Weir areas, we have held a lot of conferences in, here in Equatoria, uh, in Rumbek. Uh, I have just sent some people there also to prepare for a conference there. We are doing this, but this will not be complete, honestly speaking, until we put together a state institution that have capacity to enforce law. Once, we must also. Uh, prove it to our people that we can protect them. Then we will have uh, what you call uh, a use of legitimate force, the, the, the binging of the state, the, the legitimate violence of the state against criminals. Well, that sounds pretty good. Uh, well, Honorable, at present, with also the such of violence, like earlier on I stipulated, we, we know unity has been bleeding, uh, part of ABA and Twitch have been bleeding, Magui County, where the Hadas and uh, the Catholic... Our nation should not be bleeding like this. It yes, is just unfortunate. It is bleeding. So at present, as the Minister of Peace Building, 
is there any effort? Because you said already the unified we, force is the only thing that can contain this because of we, criminality. We, we have been holding dialogue, I have just told you. We, we have just uh, concluded a, a conference of three counties of Greater Fagad, you know, Fiji, uh, Ayut, and, 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 uh, and Fagad. We have also held uh, dialogues between the three counties of Greater Ye. We are now holding conferences also in, in, uh, in, in, uh, in, in, in Rumbe. We are now doing assessment, you know, uh, in Yambio and, uh, and Tumbura. Also to bring our people in Western Equatoria together for dialogue. We, we are now meeting three governors. In, in two weeks' time, we will meet the governor of Eastern Equatoria, governor of Central Equatoria, and governor of Jongle. I have written letters to them. We want to plan together on how to enhance dialogues among our communities. It's, there's no problem about this. The program is in place. We also have support from our partners. What I'm saying here is that dialogues without institutional capacity at the state and the county level and without law and order at the communal level in this country, uh, we will not bring permanent stability. What is happening, as I already told you, in the country is a manifestation of the fact that local and traditional leadership authority powers have been eroded by the culture of war. The, 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 the cultural environment at that level is so volatile because our traditional chiefs, our traditional leadership authorities have no power to enforce law. Uh, otherwise, we are the same people of South Sudan that have lived here for centuries. Uh, it, is, it is a cultural environment of war culture of war and violence. And, and, and you don't start doing it from there. There must be strong state institutions. Well, Honorable, the youth, that is supposed to be a driving factor for peace building, have been engaged in the fight themselves. They have been very bitter on social media against each other. How, you know, what, how, how do you engage the youth in peace building? Well, I've told you we have to start somewhere. We are engaging them. But remember, the environment we are in is already volatile. I see our use as violent cultured use. We are war cultured society. We have not been engaging in dialogues. We don't have a culture of, of dialogue, especially this generation. We have even forgotten our traditional ways to resolve conflict. Uh, just talk about social media, for example. Social media is, is, is a new thing in our lives. And it, it, it has created a life of its own. Uh, people want to resolve conflict. They, they want to fight war in the cyber space. And they also want to resolve it from there. This is not practical. Things can be resolved, conflict can be resolved, through dialogue on the ground. And that is what the Ministry of Peace Building is doing. We have a policy of engaging the youth themselves to dialogue. And we have done it in theory. We have done it in, in Rumbe. We are now planning to do it in Twitch, in, in the recent conflict of Twitch and Ngok. We believe that the youth themselves must be involved to dialogue. Political leaders like us can only facilitate those things. Uh, there is a theory in social science that uh, culture changed by evolution, not necessarily by revolution. Uh, but I think we need to introduce a revolution of peace to turn these fighters into something better than they are. 
Well, Honorable, uh, let's talk about uh, the recently passed budget. Yesterday, the parliament did pass the budget, and I perused through it. I saw this allocation for your ministry to aid your work. How do you intend to use this money to uh, push for uh, peace-building initiative across the country? Well, we, we are budgeted for everything. If, if you look at the, the items in our budget, we have a budget for dialogues, like we are talking about here. We are budgeted also for the, 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 the local authorities' uh, leadership capacity for building. We have budgeted for the building of the ministry itself, because the ministry is under establishment. Uh, it has to be built for it to build peace. Uh, we have a strategic a straight, you know, uh, we have a strategic framework. We call it one uh, strategic framework for peace building in South Sudan. Uh, you, you look at our strategic plan of action for conflict resolution, for dialogues, you will see that we will use that strategic framework to spend money which is tailored to those activities in that budget. Well, finally, Honorable, I know you have a very busy schedule. Mm -hmm. uh, what would be a message to the nation, to the people fighting each other, to South Sudanese who have taken up arms against each other? I'll tell them that we have been fighting ourselves too long. We need to dialogue. This transitional period of two years, for example, should have been used wisely to dialogue. And from here on, all of us must work to turn our youth into productive human beings, not destructive human beings. We need to move away from weapons of war, of destructions. We need to think more about economic self-sufficiency. We, we need to dialogue to know ourselves because we have known ourselves only for fighting one another all these years. Our communities need to be brought together for dialogue so that they know themselves. And that is actually the strategic vision of the Ministry of Peace Building. Thank you very much, Honorable Stephen Parkwall, for giving us your time to Thank speak to us. Thank you very much. Thank you.